Hello and welcome to Supplement, your weekly dose of readings from EPW Postscript. Every week we invite authors to read out their work published in the journal. This week we have Anlip Shadani, a writer based in Lucknow. He works with grassroots organizations fighting modern day slavery. And now, Anlip Shadani. The Departed My father died during the second wave of COVID-19. He was a school teacher at the local primary school in town and taught mathematics to youngest ones. A devout Muslim, he never missed the compulsory prayers even when he was sick. When he tested positive for COVID-19, mother was angry at him. I asked him to pray at home, but he never listened. She would mutter while feeding him porridge with her wrinkled hands. The next day, she said he must have contacted the virus from someone at school and that he should have left the job much earlier. He was too old to teach mathematics. There were numerous conjectures around the house about how he got sick, but no one was sure. Dr. Rahim, who ran a little clinic in the neighborhood, came to see him. The fever will go soon. There's nothing to worry. Make sure he takes the medicines on time and keep a check on oxygen levels. We waited the whole day and then two more days, but the fever never went down. And by midnight, his oxygen level was too low. Panicked, I called my father's younger brother, Sadiq, who lived in the city and begged him to get father admitted in a hospital. Luckily, he managed to get us a bed in a private hospital through his political network. My father was admitted there for three days. Mother called incessantly to know about his case and I lied that his fever went down and he would come home soon. Uncle Sadiq visited us daily. On Thursday, he took me home where I bathed and prayed and later ate some rice and tar. By the time we came back to the hospital, father was dead. The nurse asked me to clear the bills and told me to take his belongings, a pair of spectacles, blue trousers and a white shirt and his torn shoes with me. Father always reminded us that whenever he died, he should be buried beside his mother at the graveyard behind the school. I asked the hospital authorities for the dead body and they said it can't be handed over due to COVID-19 protocols. A funeral was necessary for father. He deserved to be buried where he had lived all his life. A city which he never left, not even for the holy pilgrimage to Mecca. Again, Uncle Sadiq somehow managed to influence the hospital authorities and we got the dead body late in the afternoon. It was wrapped carefully from head to toe. Crouched in an ambulance, we traveled back to the town so that the funeral didn't get delayed. The news of his death had already spread. Mother, along with other relatives, mourned and cried, lamenting and thumping her chest, and then finally went to sleep. By the time we reached home, dusk had fallen. I consulted the cleric of the local mosque, who said that father must be buried before the night prayer, or it would be a bad omen for the whole family. Around a dozen of our paternal and maternal relatives lived in the town. Then there was his close friend, Uncle Javed, whose son's life he saved the previous year by donating blood when the boy was dying of dengue. Then there were his students whom he had taught mathematics in that little school for 20 years of his life. None of them attended his funeral for the fear of contracting the virus from the dead body. Even the cleric who guided us on how to wash the corpse complained of nausea and fever, and thus couldn't lead the funeral prayer. It was just me and his younger brother, we took him to the school courtyard, gave him ghusl, and got him ready for the funeral prayer. When we removed the clothes in which the body was wrapped, I was shocked and couldn't believe what I saw. It wasn't my father's body, but someone else. Someone who seemed to be an old sick man. He had a little grayish mustache and a long white beard. The face was white and solemn, as if he had died by drowning in a river. At first I thought I was dreaming, but then Uncle Sadiq also cried that the man wasn't his brother and the hospital had committed a serious mistake. We just stood there and stared at the body for some time. There was nothing that we could do. So we gave the mandatory ghost and buried the dead body at the graveyard after the funeral prayer. Mother still doesn't know that the grave I visit every Friday afternoon isn't father's, but of someone else, someone else's father. But I do go there and pray for him and for my father and for all those who have departed, and for all those who are about to depart. A note to our listeners, today's episode is a fictionalized account of the death of the author's uncle. That's it for today. 
For more episodes, check out epw.in slash engage or search for Supplement wherever you get your podcasts. To experience all that EPW has to offer, head to epw.in and subscribe today. Our EPW Engage team is Divya Jyoti, Priyam Mathur, Akanksha Padi, and Tia Singh. And this is Johan saying, bye-bye and see you next week.